Hey everybody, how you doing? My name's Dave, and if you've always wanted facial hair, you can call me Davey Poo, the mobile music minstrel. How you doing? Today we are going to talk about Ape Matrix. There have not been too many videos made about Ape Matrix, and I really like it. It works with my brain. So we're going to talk a little bit about Ape Matrix, and we're also going to talk about grooves again. Now, it's real easy to make ambient music on the iPad. It's real easy to make space noises, as I call them, and I love making cosmic sounds. I'll sit and make bloops and bleeps all night long. But at the end of the day, I got to be honest, I don't want to listen to it. Even the stuff that I've created, I don't want to go back and listen to it later. It bores me. I'm not interested. I like the act of creating all those sounds and soundscaping and all of that stuff, but I don't necessarily want to listen back to it. And so I like things that are consonant rather than dissonant. I like things that have a backbeat. You know, hey, you guys know after by now that I like funk music, so I like things with a backbeat. I like pop music. I like rock music. I like songs that are three and a half minutes long. Now, doesn't mean I don't like longer, more extended things also, but I like things that are accessible to listen to uh, for a wider audience. It's just what I like listening to. Uh, I, I have the days that I dabble, but by and large, the things I like are, are things that are played on the radio. Growing up, I grew up on classic rock. In the 80s, I listened to pop and new wave, and I liked hair metal, and then in the 90s, I liked grunge and alternative and all of that, and you know, I like electronic music, I like dance music, I like, I'm a big Chromeo fan, uh, I like disco, and I like all that stuff, but it's all radio stuff. So how do we take the power of all of this craziness that is the iPad and iOS and all of the easily ambient mayhem and rein it in a little bit to try to make it into something that's a little bit more accessible? At least let's get started. So I have a few ideas here that I used earlier, so I'm going to kind of blast through a few steps now. I'm going to do something different for me. I'm going to use Ruse Maker. Ruse Maker. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to show off some of the cool features of Ape Matrix. So, first thing I did was I clicked on a little plus sign. Uh, I'll do it underneath here just so you can see. It opened up my list of audio units. I like looking at all the audio units because I, I have plenty, but I, I know what I have and it kind of makes sense to me, so it's easier for me to look at the whole list of everything. Excuse me if my face is right up in the camera, but the iPad's a little bit further away from me, so I got to get right up in your face. And you're right up in mine. Hey, how's it going? Okay. So I clicked on the little plus sign, it brought up this thing and uh, this list, and I can pick out the one that I want. And I picked out Ruse Maker. Now, I'm also going to pick something to control it, which is going to be uh, Rosetta, Rosetta XOX. And we're going to connect. Or actually, we're not going to do that. Okay, so here's how 8 Matrix works really quickly. Um, it takes a second to get your head around it, but you can't look at it as a big grid. For me, I had to look at it in a certain way as a router. So, okay, so if you start on the left-hand side of the screen, everything that's in the vertical column on the left is the source. Okay, it's where the sound is coming from. And everything that's on the horizontal column on the top is where it's going to. So I imagine, I imagine that the sound is coming in this way and going out this way. So coming in, going out, coming in, going out. And that's how I look at everything. So I always start looking here and I'm like, oh, it goes that way. It goes in this way and goes out that way. That really helped me, uh, helped it open up my head. So along the top, you'll notice that those have circles with slashes across them. That's because there's nothing, they are generating things and you can't send anything to them. You can't send anything to Rosetta because Rosetta is, uh, or I'm sorry, to Ruzmaker because Ruzmaker is a drum machine. It's generating drum sounds. And you can't send anything to Rosetta because this is an audio routing page. This is not a MIDI routing page. So right now we're only looking at routing audio signal. So if I want to connect uh, Rosetta to Ruzmaker, wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, I have to go down to this little box here and I'll put a little pointer uh, in the bottom. It's like a square with a cross in the middle. Boom, and I click that and this is our MIDI patch bay. You'll see that the keyboard here is already connected to stuff. Again, same way, it comes in from the left hand side and goes out through the top. So it comes in this way, it goes out that way. I will do that many more times. Uh, if I click this little keyboard icon, that's the on-screen keyboard, and it's already pre-routed to everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, Rosetta, and I'm going to connect it 
to control RuseMaker like that. Because of when I put in RuseMaker, it gave me a menu and I chose to automatically connect RuseMaker. Its audio is already connected to this little speaker icon, which is the output. So if I hit up here, I can see RuseMaker. If I hit play, I should hear, well, I don't have a beat programmed. Ha <laughs> ha, I shouldn't hear anything. So let's try programming something. There you go. So I had this beat going, uh, what was it? Okay, so I started with that, um, just something a little funky, and then what I did was I took with the hi-hats, I just completely mutated them, meaning I just had them playing randomly on their own, and the open hi-hat I had doing it similarly. Okay, so now we got a, a, a beat going. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit more about some cool features with um, Ape Matrix. So, there's this little uh, icon here where I'm showing at Ruse Maker. If you look in the upper left-hand corner of the Ruse Maker uh, box here, uh, there's the X, which is to close it out. There's the little drop-down, which is for presets. And if you look one more over, there's this little three-circle crazy thing, doodad bit. If you hit that, this is the jewel of Ape Matrix. This is your LFO section now. If you don't know by now, ApeSoft and Amazing Noises are two app developers and they use a similar architecture where you can apply an LFO to anything. Anything that is mappable, you can assign an oscillator to. So I am going to assign an oscillator to something in RuseMaker. I'm going to close this out. I'll show you again. Anything here in RuseMaker is mappable. I'm going to hit the little three circle thing again. Boom. So now I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to, oh, what did I do? We're going to go to decay channel one. So I'm going to change the decay. So I click on that. It brings up this menu all the way on the right hand side of this new little window is this crazy little to me, it looks like a uh, sort of a, a neck profile on a guitar or a bass, but you know it's a kind of half moon with the three dots. I don't, I don't understand their their methodology for what they pick, but that's what it is. You click on that, and this opens up your LFO. Here is how fast it is. Okay, and this is the speed. It's the frequency, right? Because it's, it's how frequently it oscillates. Go look at my video on what is an oscillator if you don't understand what I'm talking about, kids. So, uh, you got the oscillator here. This is <clears throat> how fast it is. This is the width, you know, how how wide it is, the range of, of it. And then this is the different types. So, I had it doing on and off, and I, I mapped it to sync with the tempo. So, let's do this. Okay, so let's go back and see what's actually happening here. If you look, this is the kick drum sound in Ruse Maker, and I'm oscillating the decay on the kick drum. So now I've got long, short, short, long, short, short. Right? Gives a little hitness to the thing. We're, we're using these LFOs instead of just going bazonkers, which is really fun but now this gives us a little personality. Okay, so now let's go to the snare drum here. We're gonna do something similar here. Um, I go back to here. So you gotta figure out what uh, what all of these things mean and what, what they apply to. If I go to, oh, where is it? Channel two, tune, channel two, okay? Click on the oscillator bit again. I'm gonna op open this all the way up. Now I'm gonna have it only ascending and I'm gonna have it kind of going up slowly so sometimes it's a little bit of guesswork as far as the speed that's actually a good speed um, as far as on this screen the oscillator bar like you know how far does it you know uh, I'm not verbalizing myself well how, hmm, how do I say this? It says low frequency oscillator in hertz. 
how far along the line do you have to drag the bar to make it go how fast? Because, you know, the each individual AUV3 has a different range value, and so it's a little bit of guesswork. All I'm trying to say is that sometimes you have to diddle with it a little bit. Man, I can't get the words out. Sometimes you have to just diddle with it a little bit to figure out exactly where you want to want, want to have it. You know, that's the way it works. That's life. So, anyway, my whole point was that now we have the snare drum pitch is ascending... Right? And so it gives it a little more personality. I'm going to do a couple more things here to just kind of brighten this up. Kick drum, I'm going to add a little drive. Yeah, there you go. And I'm going to add, let's see. I think that's pretty good right now. Oh, there is one other thing I want to do with this snare drum. So I'm going to go back to the oscillators. I'm going to go to the delay send for channel two. Now, if you pick a square wave with an oscillator, it acts like an on-off switch. If you if you put the values at 100% and zero, it's gonna go all the way on and all the way off. So I'm gonna sync this with the tempo, and I'm gonna, it's only gonna send some of the snare hits, it's only gonna send some of them to the delay. So if I dial the feedback down a little bit, Okay, so now I've got an interesting beat, right? It's uh, it's a little bit funky. Uh, the the LFOs are being used in an interesting way, but they're contributing to the groove, right? They're not necessarily just blowing everything out and making everything crazy. So, rather than do my standard program of baseline, um, I'm gonna do an arpeggiated baseline to move things along. Um, so we're gonna connect and show. Now, I am moving fast here on purpose. I want to keep things short. Um, there are some things that I'm skipping. <clears throat> um, I'm going to try to remember to, to, to get everything in here, but just bear with me, okay? Okay, so let's pause this for a second. So here's Rosetta Cells. Now, I want to arpeggiate something. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to only do one cell. I'm going to set it for a two-bar length. It, the gate is going to be at 100%, so it plays for the full two bars. Um, and yeah, that's good. So now I don't have this routed anywhere. It's just set up in advance. I am going to... Okay, so let's click on another plus sign. Let's walk through this a little slower this time since I kind of blasted through it. So we're going to have something be at the base. So let's use Sunriser. Sunriser just came out uh, as an AU. And, you know, hey, man, I, I bought it right when I started using AUs um, primarily. And I never really spent much time with it uh, uh, other than knowing that it sounded great. And so now I'm spending more time with it. Okay, so when you click on something, it gives you this. And you can either choose to just connect it, which means it plugs it into the output and you're done. You can show it, which means it pops it up, but it doesn't connect it. Or you can do both, or you can just hit OK and it does nothing. I'm going to hit Connect and Show. Connect and Show. And you see it showed it, it popped it up, and it also connected it here to the output, the little speaker icon on the grid. I am going to pick a sound that I made. It's well, The first thing I did was make a bass sound. Okay. Uh, I had cells here. Now, it gets tricky when you're using Rosetta in 8 Matrix because there's no text names. So you have to remember which instance of Rosetta is which sequencer, right? Because Rosetta is a collection of different sequencers. So uh, you need to make sure that you're, if you're using cells, for instance, I'm using cells and uh, XOX, I have to pick the right one. Hold on a second while I get a sip of Oh! Did you notice my mug? You know, you can get one of your very own and you can also support Audio Kit and Synth One and FM Player and all the great things these guys are doing. They are putting uh, all sorts of effort into developing these apps that are 100% free. 
all the presets are free, all the expansions are free, and the code itself is open source, so you can program your own stuff and add it to it. So go check out the Audio Kit guys. Audio Kit, Synth One, FM Player, Matthew Fetcher. You guys are great. You're great. Go support them. Go buy a mug, go buy a t-shirt, and you'll be supporting something really, really cool. So now I have to route Rosetta to Sunriser. And again, I have to remember which is which. So if I look down the left-hand column, I know the first thing I plugged in was XOX because it was controlling Rusemaker. So now I'm going to have uh, the next one down. The very bottom one has to be Cells because that's the newest one that I added. So Cells is going to control Sunriser. The other thing I have here is I have my Keith McMillan keyboard. Let's see if I can... If I can show this, well, hey, there it is, Keith McMillan keyboard. Okay, so anything you have plugged in MIDI is indicated by the little MIDI DIN pin connector icon. So I'm gonna have that connect to Sunriser, and I, cause I want to, when I play the keys, to hear Sunriser. I also am gonna have it control cells because I wanna be able to record the input, the output from the keyboard into the input from cells. So now I close that out. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to keep that open for a second. I'm going to pop this in front. I'm going to pop open Rosetta, which that's one of the great things about 8 Matrix is that from any window, you can click on the icons and everything pops up from everywhere. So you don't have to close stuff out and go back to the audio patch bay just to get to the audio stuff. So I'm going to hit record here, and I'm just going to throw in a, a chord. I don't know, something grand. Uh, I like suspended chords. They sound mysterious to me. I'm going to do like a suspended nine. Now, the great thing about cells is that you can hold down one note and lay all the notes out one at a time, which is all I did, and it laid them all in there. So if I take record off, if I did everything correctly, when I hit play, we should hear the drums and the bass. And it should just play one note of the bass because it's a monophonic sound, but I put in a polyphonic sequence. So right now we're only going to hear one note playing from Sunriser, but that's because we haven't arpeggiated it yet. We're getting there. Yeah. All right, cool. That's pretty mean sounding. Okay. I don't know how the sequence is going to sound. It's probably going to sound crummy after that because that was pretty beefy, but Let's close everything out. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to add an instance of arpeggio. Now, this is, again, it gets kind of tricky. But if you slow down and you think about it and you walk yourself through it slow, it, it works out okay. I like 8 Matrix because everything is on one screen. And once you understand this whole thing, in from one and up to the other, once that clicks, it's smooth sailing. And all the other LFOs and things are so, so what an awesome... Uh, just what an awesome uh, extra thing to add on top. It's like icing on the cake. Okay, so we're here. We're going to um, show. Now, if I click just show, it. if you notice down the right-hand side of the screen here on the... Uh, here, I'll turn this off for a second. Uh, of the audio matrix, there's these on-off switches. <clears throat> if you just hit show, it's not going to actually turn on even the sequencer, and therefore it won't run. So... You have to make sure you connect every little thing. It does, 8 Matrix doesn't do you any favors in that way. It's a little bit more hardcore in that sense where you have to really make sure you're connecting every little thing. But that's liberating once you kind of figure out your workflow. So um, we're going to go here. I have to connect this to something. So we go back to the MIDI patch bay. Now, again, the very bottom one here. Oh, I skipped a row. That's actually convenient and helps me out. Okay, so the arpeggiator down here. It, the arpeggiator is going to play... Let's work backwards, okay? What's going to play what? The arpeggiator is going to play Sunriser. And then above that, Cells is not going to play Sunriser anymore. Cells is going to play the arpeggiator. So, let's see if I was right in my thinking by hitting play. Every once in a while, I do something right. Okay. That's loud. Okay, so now we've got something kind of interesting, right? And it's consonant, meaning it's not like a jumble of craziness. But we're going to add some craziness now. Okay, so this is 
okay. It's grooving along. Let's, uh, I'm actually gonna change the tempo. Cause that's just... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's shoulder moving, if you didn't get that. Okay, um... All right, let's do one more thing here. We'll keep it simple. We'll go with Sunriser again. We'll stay with Sunriser. Connect and show. Yay, Sunriser. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, see. All right. Now, I went to play something. Nothing worked. You know why? Because I didn't connect anything. I hadn't disconnected the bass from my keyboard. So let's go back to the matrix here. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn it on the other instance of Sunriser. Okay. Um, so we're going to do something simple here. Go have another instance of cells. Show my instance of cells and turn it on. Take this last instance of cells and connect it to Sunriser. Connect the keyboard to that last instance of set. No, back up. I went a little too fast. Not that keyboard. MIDI keyboard, my keyboard into cells. Um, and we're going to, oops, we're going to set the thing here to be one bar. The gate is going to be 75%. And we're going to record chords. This is over a, a D something. So we're going to do just. My standard simple triads, because this is fast. Okay. Okay, let's see how that works. I don't know how that's gonna work. But let's go. It's fine. It's not fantastic. But it works. Okay. The last thing that I wanted to do... Give me one second. Holy crikey. Alright, we're going to make this unapologetically long then. I was going to try to go fast, but... Eh, I want to finish my thought. So... <clears throat> Alright, here's the last thing. I'm going to affect... Uh, I'm gonna affect Sunriser. We're gonna f we're gonna change this out here. We're gonna make uh, the last Sunriser the chords. We're gonna make them interesting. Now Tornado. I bought this eons ago. In fact, it was the very first thing that I ever purchased uh, effects wise for iOS. And I was like, oh, it's a multi effect. I'll be able to do anything with it. I'll buy the one thing and it'll be great. And I was only using Aurea at the time, and so no problem. But, I don't know. I could never get Aurea to work well for me for all the MIDI things I wanted to do. And that's where I, I, prim bleh, I primarily wanted to sequence things to start with and then record them to audio. And I just couldn't get Aurea to handle the load that I wanted to sequence. So, therefore, I never really used Tornado all that, or Tornado all that much because I didn't use AU, or I'm sorry, Interrap Audio Effects all that much. Well, now I'm using it all the time and it's awesome. So... We're going to introduce you to the glory of Tornado and the LFOs in Ape Matrix. So, first thing I need to do now. Now, I've, we've done a lot of routing of MIDI, but we haven't really done a lot of routing of audio. Because we haven't had any effects going on. So, I'm going to take the Sunriser pads right here with a little pointer. And we're going to run the output of that. We're going to take it out of the speaker and we're going to run it through Tornado. Okay, and then Tornado, you see here, is running through the output. Okay. Now, I'm going to pick a random Tornado um, preset. Really, really random. I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Factory f extra surgery, sure. Whatever. Now, <clears throat> I don't have time to go into Tornado in depth. Tornado does so many things and is so crazy. I've only scratched the surface. It's so deep. I could spend 
hours talking about it. But I'm going to do something really simple. Up here in the top, there's a button that says Dictator. It is a master control for all of these big knobs that are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are master controls for each of these individual effects. There are eight total effects that you can have going at once. And the Dictator is the Dictator. It controls all of the effects. So if I click on Dictator, it opens up this little thing here. And you watch, if I move with my finger this big slider on the side, see, all of the different knobs move according to where their respective colors are on this grid. It's a little confusing to look at at first, but it actually makes sense if you think about it. Okay. So, you can actually, this is the beauty of Tornado, you can actually, you know, pick a preset bunch of effects that you like the way that they're set up and then you can flip through different uh, presets on the dictator itself so just different configurations of knob twiddling which is ridiculous so let's uh let's, let's do extra surgery oops oh it didn't take the oh it just went is there like a default one test or was it just all the looping uh, yeah, I don't know how this is working. Well, whatever. Okay, cool. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the LFOs. Now, just down from the top of this, you'll see it says dictator here. We're going to have an LFO on the dictator. And it's just going to make it go back and forth at a decent speed. Okay, and you see it going up and down there. Now, look, it is controlling every one of these effects. If I, I'm going to show you one more thing in 8, eight Matrix. Down here at the bottom, so where I've been clicking on this little box with a cross in the middle for the um, MIDI patch bay, down in that, in the middle, there's the three little dots. That brings up your, your menu for some of your other functions. There's so much here, I don't have time to go through it all. But just to the left of that is your mixer button. Let's go back. See the mixer button? I clicked on it. And it brings up the mixer. So I'm going to solo Tornado out. So all I hear is Tornado. Uh, I think. Let's see. No, I'm going to do Sunriser out too. Because I think Sunriser has to send audio to Tornado. So let's listen to just what Tornado is doing now. With the dictator going up and down. Okay. See what's happening there now. Let's slow down the LFO a little bit. Okay. Tornado is so insane. So this is a little crazy for our groove. So let's not use just this. Let's let's tweak it some. But you're, you're getting the idea here. So I'm going to put Sunriser back through the audio matrix here. We're going to turn down. If you touch one of these nodes and you drag down from the center or drag up, you can turn things up or down. Let's pick a different setup. Let's turn back up Tornado. Now that's cool. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to have it move even slower, though. And we're going to turn that down. Now, if I turn now, if I go back to the mixer and I turn back on everything else. Okay, so look, we've got a decent groove going, we've got chords, we've got some madness going on that makes it a little wacky. That's sick, that is sick, I love Tornado. 
Now, you can do other things. I can route more than one thing to a single place. I've got two instances of Sunriser. What if I want to put the base through Tornado? When this thing resets itself, it'll actually sound a little more interesting than this. So, maybe I don't send as much through, I send more keys through. So there's all different combinations you can do. You can also send more than one MIDI thing to one source. So you know, I could send XOX to the base also, I don't know how that would work. So now, I just connected the output from XOX to Sunriser, the uh, one that's playing the bass line. And it's tripping it out because it's a monophonic synth, so it's trying to play multiple inputs and it's making it go wacky. Let's bring up the thing again, the mixer, and listen to it. Ape Matrix isn't perfect. You can't give n names to things. There's no text. It takes getting used to. It's certainly not as straightforward looking as AUM, but it's deep and it offers a, another side of the coin to, to look at. It, it offers some new ways of thinking and new ways of doing grooves. I mean, I, I, I've done a bunch of videos all in AUM and just trying to think differently and think through a matrix layout. And I mean, I didn't even scratch the surface of this. You know, at the bottom of 8 matrix here, there's there's the A and B section. Those are buses. I can actually bus this. If I slide this whole thing, I have a whole nother matrix over here, and then I have a whole third matrix. So if I had enough CPU, I could be running things all through here. I could have, a, you know, a single matrix for the bass, a single matrix for the drums, and a single matrix for the chords. And I could use these A and B buses to route things in between. It's super, super duper powerful. And it can just do so much. And, and because everything's at AUV3, I go here. You know, save preset. Let's do... Uh, Covid, you know, save, done. Uh, and then when I close this out, I I can open up something that I've done before. Let's open up more garbled shite, shall we? Yes, done. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> all new apps, all new state saved. Let's uh let's crank that master down a little bit, shall we? Yeah, a lot of these are experiments and most of them don't pan out well. You get the point. We can go back to more PooVid, more PooVid. Um, and if I hit done, it reloads everything. I mean, bang, it's right back. It's so ridiculous. So that's the drill. That's 8 Matrix. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope this... Uh... <laughs> Hold on, let's unsolo that. Let's end with a little bit of a groove. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, some of the madness. I hope you enjoyed 8 Matrix. Uh, there's so much here. Um, I'd like to do more videos on 8 Matrix and show you a little bit more around, uh, maybe at a little slower pace, but I hope you enjoyed the long video. And uh, subscribe to the channel, you know, like the video, tell all your friends, you know, don't do anything rude. Don't make anybody mad, but you know, politely. You could hand out business cards, you know, talk it up at parties. You know, you could inject it. I don't, you know, if you're in sales or something, inject it into your conversations with your clients, you know. Poo goes a long way. So, I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching.